Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. It's afternoon, yeah. Lunchtime. I hope you're all wonderful and well and so happy to have with us back again on Solutions with Aquarius Rising, our beautiful Bryce on Wellness Wednesday. How are you, honey? How's it going I'm, there? Looking warm and I'm looking all chilly. <laughs> yes, beautiful. It's well next at the end of this week, next week it's getting into the 90s. I don't know what that is in Celsius, but let's just say that's really hot. <laughs> um, so so um and I apologize. I was just saying my dog is in the other room, but he is snoring. He's a very loud mm -hmm. snore. So if y'all hear some strange grumblings, it's not a demon, it's my dog. <laughs> so <laughs> he's a very loud <laughs> snore. He, I don't think he would have survived long on the streets, you guys. He's way too loud. He would have attracted a predator. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really saying thank you for that because uh, it, it, just in case you know, we, we we get comments sometimes about strange noises. <laughs> it's him. Now we know it's Bryce's dog, Ravi. Stop. <laughs> yeah, he's on. the loudest sleeper. The uh, yesterday I was morning. I was. I'll tell you guys a real cute story. We were just talking about animals. How sweet they are. I was practicing it was early in the morning he'll go out with me and he was asleep on the sofa and he was ha he was talking in his sleep whoop, 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 and kind of moving his feet and then all of a sudden like i could tell he was panicked so i, I quit practicing for him and i went south on the sofa and started petting him i was like ravi it's okay he woke up looked at me and then he put his head in my lap and started crying <laughs> i was like oh he had a bad dream <laughs> Oh, and so I was petting him. I was like, oh, it's okay, buddy. It's just a bad dream. Um, so he's a very that animated. So <laughs> he's, he's lucky to have you as his mommy, Bryce. That's Aww. very lucky. Him. I'm lucky Good to have him. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's an old soul. He's, he's my little bubba. So <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> anyway, we are talking, check above my head, feet. <laughs> Day, right? Wow. And I love, 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 love feet. So I'm very excited to be chatting about our feet and stuff um, like that. And because, you know, I think I got to tell you, <clears throat> and please, no criticism. It's just an observation to anyone out there. For 20 years, when I've been doing what I'm doing, you know, I oftentimes when people come for healing, they lie down on the plinth, whatever, do whatever. I have been amazed at how abused so many feet mm -hmm. are in, you know, there are how many abused feet are in this world. It made me so sad to see that on so many occasions, because for some reason I've always taken care of my feet and I've always liked my feet. And um, it's just, you know, our feet carry us forward, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just energetically and spiritually it's that, part of our anatomy which carries us forward in life and they are very very telling i mean in our sun kids book we've got an entire chapter on reflexology <clears throat> and the different uh, sections of the feet uh what they relate to um how they work i mean it's just and what they're connected to it's just incredible and i mean the soles of your feet are connected to every single meridian in your body mm -hmm. um and every single organ in your body Yep. So, and how many of us squish our feet up in these crunched up, tiny, extra high heeled, mm -hmm. that does your feet no good. Because, and also when you look at your toes and reflexology that I do, your toes represent your thoughts, right? So when your toes are all crunched up in the, in the tip of these tiny tight shoes that I don't know how people wear it, Seriously, I mean, I like high heels and stuff, make no mistake. I'm very much a girly girl. But the, when I see what some poor people's feet look like in these shoes, you've got to understand why our mind at the same time has been so cluttered and crunched in. It's amazing when you start understanding the connection that your feet, your soles, your toes, the bones in your feet, the ligaments, everything has to do with the well-being of your body and your mindset. 
They're incredible. So I'm very excited for our topic today. Now, yes. enough blah, blah from me because fundamentally everyone comes to hear you, but I can't help giving my 20 cents worth. No, so- I think this is a, this is a joint collaboration because we both have a lot of experience before even coming on YouTube with this topic. And I'm, I think that's one thing, well, we have a lot in common, but I think one thing we do have in common is our fascination with how the physical body is the manifestation of the energetic body. It's the Shakti of the Shiva. And that, and, and for a lot of Westerners, that concept is very foreign, you know, in the West things for a very long time, the body is one thing, the mind and spirit are another. And, you know, if we go down to the fundamental, you know, yeah, your spirit will leave your body one day, but the body is the expression of the soul. And so a lot of times, like we've talked about before with the chakra system, um, same to do with the feet when there's something aching in the body or some misalignment in the body, it's, it's not just about the body. There's some misalignment within the energetic body and that's what needs to be fixed. Cause once Absolutely. that's fixed, then the rest will follow suit. Yes. yes. Yeah. I always say that you can imagine that when, when there's a blockage or a misalignment in the body, you can imagine it's the hair is all think of, think of your energy as hair on your head. That just when it's when it's uh, vibrating in harmony, it's like this beautiful psh, shimmer of just you know infinite light at infinite speeds, you know, and tiny, teeny little strands of it. Yeah. Now, when it gets blocked up and dysfunctional, you can imagine those strands slow down and rot, and then they're not together. Like how many times haven't you had a chain on the silver chains or gold chains that knock together and you've just got this big fat bunch of stuff that you really battle to get undone. Yeah. It's a similar sort of thing. So stress, anxiety, well, fear, fear is the fear is the basic emotion from which all negative emotions surfaces. So any fear related energy is going to create a blockage in your body. And it starts off, you know, like that. But then, as I said, you know, when we then open it up, it's like suddenly, it's like unknotting that knot and suddenly psh, the energy flows again. And then the body heals of itself. Yes. Yes. That's the absolutely. healing. You're, you, the healing is not to go bzzz over someone. The healing is to bring yourself into alignment and let the flow of God's energy flow through you, into you, around you, purify you, recalibrate you, realign you, and then the body, but because it's a meat suit and it's a little bit denser than the spirit, it might take a day, it might take a week, it might even take a month, it's going to be a little bit slower to heal, but you'll feel an instant relief. You'll feel an instant relief. If, say, your pain is on a scale of 1 to 10 and you're sitting at 8, your pain will instantly go down to maybe 4 or 5. And you'll then start understanding how to work with releasing and transmuting because pain is not there to persecute or destroy you. It's there to take you to a deeper level of awareness. Yeah, it's, so it's you showing can, you. It's, um, yes. it's like, um, I think I've told this story before, uh, David Grieg, my first uh, American a Ashtanga teacher was telling me that are telling us in a conference once a story of, with Guruji with our in India where you know he was talking about some of the pain in the in the Ashtanga practice and he asked Guruji is this pain necessary and Guruji said yes because pain is real pain is yeah. real and when you Absolutely. understand what that pain in your physical body is trying to tell you it's not telling you that you got a messed up hamstring it's telling you your hamstring's hurting because something in you is hurting something is exactly. in, and that's where we start to untangle stuff because the body is, you know, I, I tell my students all the time, if you were under amnesia or um, anesthetics, if you're about to have surgery and they knock, they knocked you out, right? That surgeon could put your leg behind your head, could do all sorts of things with your body and the body would do it because there's no mind, there's no thought attached to what's going on. So that shows you a lot about how our thoughts and our psyche affect the physical manifestation of what's in front of us. And, and that's the, that's the power move is that when you understand this, you have dominion over it and you can start to correct and find that healing within yourself, right? Because you're the one that has to do that. You're the one that has to take that step, right? 
I would love to share this with you as well, just speaking on that level. When I was about 12 years old, 12, 13, somewhere there, I was, used to be a hockey player. And we were hitting hockey with, with one of the guys just messing around, you know, at, on the hockey field at school. And he hit a hockey ball. And we were never allowed to play with the guys for that reason because our hockey team was very good and we weren't allowed to have the guys hit us and hurt us in the way that exactly what happened that day. But he hit that hockey ball with such force that it hit me on the knee and straight over it hit me at the knee. His stick hit me as well. So the hockey stick and the knee hit me within a nanosecond of each other. I thought I was going to die. Thank goodness nothing was broken or shattered or anything. But it left me with not permanent knee ache, but if I did a lot of stuff, at, you know, at, uh, over a long time, then I would, my knee would start aching. So then I'd need to rest it. And I couldn't sit for a long time in a certain cross-legged position. And that went on all throughout the years. Then I went to India and I went to study yoga in 2012. Now I'm, I'm in my late 40s already at this stage, right? So... Um, It was such a beautiful understanding of realizing mind over matter mm -hmm. and that that kind of pain is in the mind. But I then decided in that time I was going to heal that pain. And I also went into my body at that age of 12 years old when I had that happen. And I said to myself, how was I feeling at that time in my life? Oh, boy. The magnet. Oh the magnet that boy. pulled it. Yeah. It was like Magnet that pulled me back and I went into all those horrible teenage, tweenage, <laughs> puberty, going into adolescence and oh, it was just a horrible feeling. I was so unhappy. Yeah. And it was just, you know, just within myself because we, we also spoke about the body dysmorphia mm -hmm. and I was getting that. I was starting to pick up weight and I didn't know how to not pick up weight and I couldn't understand what was, I've always been sporty. I'm pretty active. Why am I picking up weight? I'm, none of my friends are. And my boobs suddenly grew from nothing to literally within three months, I had like boobs, right? <laughs> I was like so self-conscious about all of this. I just, that whole feeling, and your right is obviously the masculine, so it meant moving forward. Your knee is always about a flexibility. And also the knee, when you're looking spiritually, it's about past life stuff, okay? Wow, yeah. So that presents you from the flexibility of moving forward. It was amazing because then I took myself into that after that beautiful experience, then got myself to the top of the mountain because we were climbing that Mount Arunushala in India, that sacred mountain. Mm -hmm. And my knee has never been so sore. And I remember Prabhu, this Indian guy that was also heading up one of our Swami's um, uh, uh, ashrams. Um, he was with me and he just said, this is in your mind. He says, you can do this. He said, go. And I just, as I was walking, I was just going back into that 12 year old back into, and just reassuring, this is who we become now. Look at us. We are. We? And it was just amazing. Yeah. Within half an hour, my knee ache stopped and I've never, ever had it since. Yeah. So it was incredible to actually experience that firsthand and just understand when you make friends with your body, when you, when you work in alignment with yourself and you believe. And remember, Jesus was the ultimate healer, right? Mm -hmm. And only those who believed mm -hmm. that healing was available were healed. Yep. Not these saying, oh, I bet you can't heal me. Come, come, you come heal me. I dare you, I dare you. Yeah, like it's not that. Those who believed that healing was available, and also as a healer, Jesus never saw them in their illness. He only saw them in their full glory. So, as a healer, you don't see someone as sick. You see them as in their full glory, experiencing a dis hyphen ease at this point. So, this is just part of their experience, you know, in our beautiful meat suits which are so, so intelligent and so beautiful and so important. You know, we get to experience pain. We, but it is, remember, you are not a, 
a, a, a human being trying to be spiritual. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. And if you can get that and that slots in, a lot of things will change for you because then you realize this pain is simply an experience to teach you something more deeper about yourself. So instead of fighting it, sit with it, breathe into it. I know, believe me, I've also been in pain sometimes, not just physical, but emotional and mental that I've wanted to kill someone literally. Well, not, okay. Not quite, but I think it's a figure of speech yeah. where I've not, I mean, it felt like my blood was literally boiling. I was literally seeing red. Yeah. Oh, same. And in that, yeah. Yeah. So in that moment, you know, it's just about breathing yourself back into quietude and knowing that you can and disciplining yourself to do it. Man, when you do that, that's when you get your gifts. That's when suddenly your answer arises. Suddenly you're able to see solution in a conflict. Suddenly the person that you're conflicting with will call you or you suddenly feel inspired to call them and you can talk through the situation. Suddenly you have a memory and suddenly it just heals a whole lot of other stuff. Suddenly the truth just pops out of every cell in your body and Pain just dissolves. It's incredible, you know, when you actually do yeah, that. Yeah, it's in that. I was actually having a conversation just like this with a friend the other day who's new to this world. And um, I've been helping her with exercise and using her body in a very appropriate way to understand. And when the emotions come up, that's a good thing. That's your body showing you we're holding, you're holding shit basically like that you need to work through. And she was saying, oh, I have this issue. You know, I was diagnosed with this. And I was like, stop that is limiting you. You're putting yourself in a box. And that's what the dark controllers, the Lucy's have done with our medicine. Oh, you can't do this because you have arthritis. Bullshit. I have, I technically have arthritis and I haven't had a flare up in years. Exactly. And then I want to say that if I can just chime in and add something. So you have arthritis. Wow. What is your body telling you? Arthritis is about holding on mm -hmm. and inability to let go. So usually if you are suffering from that, this might also be a generational thing, okay? Oh, it is. But yeah. if it is, it's in your body and it's a lot there for you to see. So usually people with arthritis have held on to lots of pain, lots of control, lots of anger over time. They don't know how to let go. They don't know how to free themselves. So yeah. maybe that's what your body is telling you. So yes, Take your, your homeopathic remedies and your Ayurvedic uh, concoctions Turmeric, and what yeah. have you to your body. Do exercise because that's always how, and breathing is so important for the body, okay? And then, obviously, you've got to do the mental and spiritual and emotional work. That's the most important. You see, it's exactly what you say, Bryce. The dark has caught us there and said, oh, you got pain in the body. You don't know what's causing it, so you've got to use our medication. And Hello, big farm. And you inherited it. it has, it's just something you inherited. It's not, you know, the separate from the body. And the mind. No, no. I literally have not had an issue with my arthritis in years, knock on wood, because every single day, I get on my mat and I do my work and I allow the emotions to come up. I journal, I sit with them. I have awesome people like Shanti that have done, you know, that help. It's good to have friends that keep you in check too, you know, and like, you know, but just knowing that you have the power you have, think about water, like water can be a liquid. It can be a steam and it can be as solid as ice. It's all the same water. It's all the same thing, but the conditions have changed it. That's the alchemy, right? You can do that as well with what's happening in your body. You can change the issue as Shanti talks about that alchemy into something that is not bondage. You know, that's what you said, the arthritis, it's like bondage. And you see people who are really arthritic. It's almost like they're chained, like they're with their hands. They're kind of, it's almost like they're chained, like they're in, a, in handcuffs, but you are the exactly. one that holds the key to those handcuffs. You exactly. hold that key. So, and exactly. that's, and with, with the, I was, I kind of told you guys this story, like 
and I know I've talked about this on my channel before, my mom's family, the Bryce's, my, my, my name is my mother's maiden name. That's a big thing to do down here in the South. Um, the Bryce family, I come from a long, long line of doctors, long line, like dating back into the 1800s. That was like the family business was medicine. And um, so for years now, I grew up in this family. My father himself is a veterinarian where the body was just a body. And if you had cancer, if you had arthritis, if you had why, whatever, whatever, it was just something you inherited. Oh, well, shucks. That's just your G DNA. The, the, the mental soul had nothing to do with that. So that's the world I was, the Western world. But I think a lot of our subscribers probably grew up that way. Oh, I have something. I needed to go to the doctor and get a diagnosis and get medicine. And, and that's that, right? And so when I first, I was always the weird kid, always. I was always seeing spirits and you know, so it's, it's very apropos that I ended up in India, <laughs> but, uh, you know, in college, I was reading books on reincarnation and reincarnation in my family was not talked about. It was not something that we believed in as Christians that, you know, but I was reading these books on reincarnation. My grandmother, my dad's mom also would have books. She had books too on reincarnation, but after college, I was right after college, I was living in Los Angeles. I was in my early twenties and my whole life I have struggled with digestion issues since I was a child. And so I have kind of PTSD around food sometimes and very skeptical. I have to always like inspect, but I had a friend from college come and visit me in, in Los Angeles and she brought a bunch of friends too. So it was an apartment full of girls. And of course I was taking them out everywhere, showing them the city and my stomach was messed up because we had been eating out a lot. So I had some stomach issues and I was saying to the girls, I was like, yo, my stomach's really messed up. And one of my friend's friends who was visiting was a reflexologist. Now at this point, I still had no concept of the fact that the body was only responding to the mind. And I was saying, my stomach's really messed up, you guys. I think you might have to just go do this thing without me. And my friend's friend who was a reflexology said, Shh, can I see your foot? And so I gave her my foot. I didn't know what the hell she was going to do. And she, she took this point in my foot. I'm always barefoot. And she literally like pressed right into it and it hurt like hell. It was like, oh shit, like it hurt like hell. But right when she let go, my stomach like released and I felt great. And that was my first real experience with seeing the connection between emotion, body, we have these points that can release certain things. And so that was my first real experience with reflexology. And then of course, in the yoga practice, um, we have huge, even though people might not think about the foot in the yoga practice, but I know from the Ashtanga lineage, my lineage, um, we don't choreograph our practices. We have six series that were from the Yoga Karanta, which is an old manuscript that's been passed down through the generations. There are these six different series that you follow. And if you study, which I've, I've studied all this, well, most of the series extensively in a classroom and on the mat myself. They have you holding particular asanas at particular places on your foot. You know, so like if you're in a forward fold, John Yushashasana A, for example, you're taking the bind around the upper part of the foot and you're pulling in. Well, that in this area is getting into your respiratory system. Uh -huh. So I tell my, my students all the time, I'm like, don't bring your hands to the floor. I'm like, people only bring their hands to the floor for Instagram. So it looks pretty, but in our practice, we want to pull into these, these, I love Indian teachers so much because they just tell you like it is like my teacher goes white fearing, like white fearing, whatever you're like freaking out on the mat. There's no like, Oh, it's okay. He just goes white fearing. You do white fearing. Like, come on. <laughs> I just love Indian teachers so much because they're just so like, yeah. where, he goes, where's your mind? Where's your mind? <laughs> Where's your mind? Uh, why fearing? They um, they're, they're very, they very, they very much teach the power of the mind. So <laughs> it's always, it's always about the mind. Yeah, yeah. And, and you study these things, and they are having you press, like a, you know, like in certain other postures. If you're catching your big toe, you know, not only is the thumb, thumb touching the, the pad of the index finger, but you're really locking into that toe and re retreating it back which then connects into the inner thigh up into the perineum. And so there's 
these powerful, powerful places on the foot. And I, I quote you a lot, Shanti, where you, you, you've said many times, and I love it. You know, a tree that is firmly rooted in the ground doesn't fear the wind. And so if we build from the roots, the yes. roots, the foot is like that rooting. It connects it's the all. Connection. The, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the heels. And when you look at the heels, the heels on the feet represent the root chakra as well. Yeah. So that is where you stand. And I mean, now, when you look at areas of your foot, for example, how many people out there have cracked heels, right? Yeah. Or so I, I invite you guys that have cracked heels to really look at this because that is about your security. So do you feel cracked up in your security? Do you feel like you aren't able to do things? Do you feel you are walked all over in life? Do you feel like you've been a victim to this world? Because those are, you see, this is again how the body talks. So when we start looking at these areas in the body and you start understanding how that speaks, and as you say, then, then the pad would be the, the heart, the heart mm -hmm. center as well. The necks of the feet is the, is the, is the throat, the neck of the toes, sorry, is the throat, mm -hmm. neck and throat, literally. And then you're looking at the, at, the, at the tops of the toes, and that's the third eye, the tips mm -hmm. of the toe, and especially the big toe is the crown. Yeah. So when you look at these certain, like the whole chakra, the chakra is working out on the feet, you can understand again, and not just through the reflexology and the meridians in the feet, but through the chakra system as well, that works up the feet. You can see, you're going to see then which body parts that are aligned to the feet belong to which chakras and it, it aligns perfectly. It's amazing. Yeah. And some of these charts just have them by colors, guys. So if you pull up any chart, but you can see what she's talking about. I mean, look at all that information, you guys. Yeah. Look at everything here. And you know, it's so funny. So you're talking about the heels too. That's the lower back and the anus, the cracked heels. Well, how many people have lower back issues? So you're seeing the ascending colon. So that's what I was talking about. My, my friend's friend like hit me like right here, you know, in the foot. And obviously you have difference between the left and the right as well. But, you know, it's so interesting. You're talking about the big toe with the crown, uh, the crown chakra. And I tell my students all the time. So when you look at like the bundas, which we've spoken about with the chakra system, and there's three big bundas in the body that we're always working with. And those are just energetic locks. And the first one is mulla bunda which is in your perineum. It's right in your crotch. It's right by Muladhara. And it's that yeah. locking in and sealing of energy because in like practices, yoga practices, a lot of healing arts, you want to actually hold the energy in so you can move it up and down the spine. But Mulabanda at the perineum um, in India, <laughs> I always laugh and tell my students this, in India, they'll literally check your Mulabanda. You'll have a hand just right in your crotch, just checking. And it's not weird. In India, it's not weird. It just, it's, it just it's is normal. what it is. Like, it's not normal. It's not weird at all. I promise you guys. Like, it's just not weird in India. In America, if a teacher did that to me, I, it would be weird. I can't do that to my students, like, nor do I want to do that to my students. But I always tell my students that I can see as a teacher if their mola bunda is engaged by their big toe. All right. Uh, yeah. So if the toe, and I struggle with this myself, this is something that I know all too well in my practice. I myself have the propensity to rock my weight over to my pinky toe and lift up off of the, the ball of the big toe, even when I'm standing. And so in my practice, I have to focus on pressing into the big toe. And that's interesting. It connects to the crown chakra too, because if we're looking as above, so below. And so it all works together. And, you know, as I was saying, when you're pressing into that big toe, so if the, if the floor is here and I'm pressing into that big toe, what's happening is it's engaging into the inner leg, into the inner, inner thigh. Well, the inner thigh holds anger. And the fact yeah. that I've struggled with arthritis, this held anger, that's obviously something I, I, for I struggle with really tapping into. So I have to then be aware of it. But how amazing is that? Is that it's connecting into the root, mola bunda, but also up at the top, the alpha, the omega, yes, exactly. as above, so below. And so there's exactly. so much you can, I mean, the arch of the foot. I know people that have like a, don't have a high arch, 
typically struggle a lot with stomach problems. Now I do yes. have a high arch. I do have that, but I also have stomach problems, but it's interesting, um, which is rare to have someone to be flat footed. That's actually pretty rare, but I've had, we've had a few come through the shala and it's interesting to watch how their body responds to not having that arch in the foot um, and having to try to create that arch in the foot. Wow, that's amazing. And it is. And it's incredible when you start seeing that. I'll tell you what, I've got a great idea. And that depends on how many people are interested there. I'd be interested in running an online basic reflexology workshop for people. Because I have a part of one of the Sun Kids chapters in the book that we teach the kids is reflexology. And also about how the feet work, the chakras, the different areas, and beautiful massages, exercises for your feet. And it's such a lovely thing to do for your kids or your kids to do for you. Again, it's one of these beautiful bonding ways because it's massage, it's touch. You see, the thing that really heals if we understand healing and the human beings is human touch, touch. Yeah. Hug, touch, massage, rub, feel, you know, that yeah. is very healing. So again, especially, you know, we've been so disconnected from each other for such a long time and many families as well, you know. We're just looking at what's been happening in lockdown in the last two years. How many people haven't gotten a divorce? How many families have broken up, whatever? And I'm, I don't, and honestly, as sad as what that, that is, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Because I think this is the time where all sorts of cracks have become crevices um, in people's lives. So I think, you know, but by the same token, it's a beautiful opportunity to reconnect with each other and amazing ways to do it through just, even if you're sitting watching TV at night, give your child a massage on the feet, you know, um, and have him or her give you one too, you know, so... It's, it's an amazing way of reconnecting and just having fun with each other. So, yeah. And I've, I'm a huge lover of pedicures. I've been getting pedicures since I was in my 20s. And I love those foot massages because it is. It's so healing. That touch of another human being is so healing. And that is something yeah. they took away from us during lockdown. I mean, I feel sorry for people who locked down completely alone because – even though being, being in solitary confinement sometimes is a good thing because it forces you to deal with your own stuff, but also for that long, I mean, you're going out with that, you're going without that, that necessary human interaction that we often need. And absolutely, yeah. I agree with you. I, almost everybody I know is, no one got out of this lockdown without being affected in some way. Like we're in such a frictional time of our timeline where a lot of relationships are splitting now. A lot are, and and that's. And I agree with you, Shanti. It's not, it's not a bad thing. And just because a relationship is over doesn't mean it was a bad relationship. It just served exactly. purpose. Well, is, everything is per everything is perfect. And you know, the longer we hold on to anger and grief and pain and pain of separation or whatever regarding that, um, the longer we keep ourselves unhappy. You know when when change is imminent and when change comes knocking at your door, it is time for change. And if that is happening in your life, it means that it's a very timely time. Although it doesn't always feel good, but it's your opportunity for beautiful growth and beautiful new beginnings and new chapters and what have you, you know. And, you know, I just think it's a beautiful time. And, again, going back to our feet, walk barefoot. Yep. Because as much as what you can, even if it's in your house, in your garden, because you must remember the little sand pebbles and even on the tar, all the time is stimulating the bottoms of your feet and therefore stimulating the meridians, therefore stimulating your organs. Because when you look at the feet, each part of your foot and your hands, by the way, as we know from last week as well, are connected to various organs in the body. So that's why, Bryce, you were talking about that stomach. Absolutely. It's amazing. And I can't tell you how many times it's happened with me as well. I work on the foot and I, because it's just so beautiful, I'll just, just trace the foot mm -hmm. with my clients on them. 
And especially if they've got, and then I go, mm, I can just feel, you know, but there again, I'm intuitive. So I feel the different temperatures. I'll feel where it's hotter and colder and more angry, if that makes sense, because the energy tells me. So, and then I just, I'm guided just at, to stimulate one area. I've had people get up and throw up as well, yeah. definitely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Doing that. And, but man, it's like in that three minutes, their life has changed completely because mm -hmm. suddenly this heaviness, the lead, the pain, the illness, and this is how people heal themselves from things like cancers. I'm telling you, I've worked with many people who've healed themselves. Um, from these life-threatening ailments, you know. And it really is learning how to work with your body. Guys, it's so beautiful. It's so important when you appreciate this amazing vehicle and you just sit at night, even watching TV, give yourself a foot massage, get some creams and what have you, get a plastic bucket, fill it with warm water with salt and oils, sit there, give yourself a foot soak, give yourself a pet if you can't go to the salon. You and, you know. A tennis ball or a golf ball? Golf yes. balls are a little bit harder and, and just stand up and roll your foot over it and feel. And you can feel where your foot's a little bit more sensitive. And that might be an area of the, the foot to look at because usually it's the same amount of pressure you're applying to that area as other areas. So there's something there. I know many yoga teachers, many Ashtanga teachers, that can feel in someone's foot when they're a female, when they're adjusting a female and they, they touch their foot, that can feel in the foot whether the female is, whether it's her time of the month to be fertile. Like they can feel the ovulation yeah. happening in the Everything foot. Yeah, which is so wild, mm -hmm. you know, especially for 20-year-olds. Like they can feel it in the foot. Exactly. And yet, isn't it insane how we abuse our feet and how we hate them and how we neglect our toenails and how, and I really, honestly, if I can tell you guys something, it's take care of your feet, love them, just wow, they are just so important. They're such important appendages of your body. They're really beautiful. And the calf but, uh, muscle, the calf muscle, which a lot of times is controlled by the foot, that's your second heart. That's, yes. that's, what's, that's the muscle that's responsible for getting the blood from your lower body back up to the heart for it to be clean. And think about what they've done with these high heel shoes. And I, I like my high heel shoes, shoes too when I'm going out somewhere fancy, but most of the day I'm barefoot. Most days I'm barefoot. Um, but when we wear those high heel shoes, we're actually like shortening the Achilles heel, which Westerners have very tight Achilles heels. But when we stretch open and we're stretching open that calf, we're allowing that to actually work for the blood cleansing as well. And like a lot of dancers will do the rolling of the calf. Um, I do that a lot during the day to try to keep this really fluid and open and that energy working. And it's, and I, I think Shanti, I think we kind of agree with this, that the controllers, the Lucy's, they know all of this. Hence why yes, they've dumbed us down to this yeah. information. Of course. And it's only through trial. You know, we can sit here and talk about these things until we're pink in the face. But it's only through experiencing and actually saying, okay, well, I'm going to try this to see if it works. I'm going to try to change my diet. I'm going to try walk barefoot more often. I'm going to look after myself more. I'm going to give myself a weekly foot massage. I'm going to connect with my kids in that way. Isn't it interesting, uh, Bryce, uh, when we do a toe stretch pose in yoga. Oh my goodness, guys, you come down onto your knees, okay? You tuck in your toes and then you put your back down on your heel, uh, on your heels. So basically you've got your toes tucked in, you've got your knees on the floor and you've got your butt on your heels. And then you lean back, oh my goodness, and you start stretching the bottoms of your feet. Mm -hmm. When I started yoga, that was had to be the most painful exercise ever because what you're doing is you're stretching the ligaments and the muscles and the tendons in your toes it is so sore when yeah. you begin but now it's the best thing ever i just yeah. love it i can pretty much go on infinitely stretching my toes and my feet when i do that exercise it is amazing and you just feel that rush of energy that's going up from your feet, your toes, and it just rushes up through your body. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's, there is too, there's a variation of upward facing dog 
Um, most of the time we teach up dog with the toes on the ground, lifting the hips, pulling forward. But if you have a rel relatively strong back, you can actually flip the toes the opposite way and do up dog because it's the same thing. It'll start to release into the foot. And it so that, there's a variation of that too. Actually, my teacher in India does his up dogs that way. He teaches wow. it the other way, but he does. If you look at pictures of him and it's, it's purposeful because he's stretching something in his foot in his own practice. Yeah. And, and so if you, if you guys, and that's the reason why, like in yoga Tai, I believe most forms of Tai Chi, um, uh, uh, martial arts, they don't wear shoes. No one yeah. wears shoes. Why is that? Because the ancients understood the value of the foot that the foot needed to be on the ground. Look at animals. Animals don't wear shoes. Well, some animals do because they're humans give them shoes, but animals don't wear shoes and they're, they, they know how to use their paws and their feet, exactly. you know, I, I do something uh, called barefoot hiking. So I go hiking barefoot. It is the most, and I'm talking about like up table mountain and places like that. Okay. It is amazing because what happens is, is that, Every time I place my foot down, I'm consciously aware of where I'm stepping. Think about it. If you're wearing walking shoes, crunch, 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 crunch. You don't really think about where you're stepping, right? Um, but with barefoot hiking, okay, it's literally putting your foot down feeling. Feeling. You, you A, treading lightly on the earth. You're giving yourself a light footprint, so to speak. So just virtually you can look at it like that. Um, <clears throat> you're conscious of every step you take. So you're mindful. You're becoming mindful of the experience of walking forward or stepping forward. It is amazing. I, I highly recommend that. If you guys can enjoy something like that, go for a hike, go for a walk in the forest or just on the road around the block. Do it barefoot. Your feet might feel sore in the beginning, um, but that's okay. Just give them a lovely massage and with coconut oil or whatever, you know, and just warm that's them. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just give them and just thank them and just understand that you're getting, you know, like any exercise that hasn't been used for a while and you haven't done stuff, you know, you might just have to get your little wobble back again. I mean, as a kid, you were running around outside barefoot all yeah. the time. I was just thinking Licking about that. Driving, yes. punching yourself, kicking. You were, I mean, what, how, kids, does a child want to wear shoes? No. no. Which child ever says, please get up, put on my shoes to go and play outside? Never. <laughs> my parents tell me when I was a kid, I used to pit. I would like uh, pitch a fit over socks. Like I just didn't want to put anything yeah. on my feet and I would just cry wow. and I did not want them to put socks on me. And so it's like, we knew, I mean, kids, it's like the more I learn, the less I know as kids, we come out knowing this, like intuitively knowing this and then the world takes that away from us. Yeah. Kids like to play. I mean, I'm thinking about like here in Georgia, we're very, it's a very, we're at the base of the Appalachia mountains. So it's very woody, uh, a lot of like pine straw, but kids are always outside getting splinters but they don't care you just pull the splinter out and they keep going and playing outside barefoot it's kids know they know these things and i like i said it's, unless i'm going somewhere fancy i'll put high heels on but most of the day i'm barefoot most of the day i mean think about this kids love to run and play in mud and so how much do we pay for mud face masks and mud bars <laughs> isn't it ludicrous we think about how much money the beauty salon makes out of nature. <laughs> and we go around a mud bath instead of just rolling around in the water, the mud, you know. Kids, I mean, I remember that so many times, just coming back covered in mud. There was nothing better. Nothing you know? better. I mean, I grew up on the farm, but it's a different thing. And swimming in the river the whole day. Yeah. And in the dam, you are sunburnt as heck. And you are just full of... I don't even know what you just, and yeah, you've got scrapes and bruises from running and jumping and falling and yeah, life is cool as a kid, you know, you, you, you with nature, you enjoy your body. You, you let's take a little bit of that back with us, you know, find yeah, it in a child. It's so uh, funny to talk about rolling around the mud. I'm a big, uh, we can do, and if you guys ever want to do an episode on cold therapy, we can do that. Cause I, I'm a big proponent of cold ice therapy. Even yes, let's do it. 
we Let's could next week it. you guys do want to do ice because i even though i hate being cold but i used to do cryotherapy a lot um since the lockdown i haven't been back because of weird you know stuff but you guys know what we're talking about but you know the cryotherapy you put yourself in a like a basically a freezer for three minutes naked and i was telling my best friend about it he lives up in toronto canada and of course it doesn't snow here in georgia like we don't have that and he was like well i'm not going to pay for that i'll just wait for it to snow and i'll just go naked in my backyard and lay in the lay in the snow for three minutes <laughs> i was like Touche. I was like, fair point. <laughs> Why would I want to pay for that? Okay, yeah. I have tons of snow in my backyard. I'll just go lay there naked for three minutes. <laughs> I was like, what they do in Scandinavian countries, right? I mean, they are known to jump into those frozen lakes. Yes, ice baths. Yes. Yeah. I have a friend right now. He goes swimming in Cape Town. Uh, and anyone who know who who's in Cape Town knows how freezing that water is. No wetsuit in the mornings, like five o'clock they're going, and they're swimming. And he says that cold water is addictive. Yes. He's, yeah, I mean, wow. We can talk about that next week if you guys want to to get into because I take a cold shower every morning, an ice cold shower, and I hate. And I'm telling you guys, people are like, oh, I hate the cold. You are not going to find a bigger baby when it comes to the cold than me. Like I. I'm from the Sun Belt, you know, I'm from hot Lana. Like I, we don't, we don't do winter down here. It's not really a thing down here, you know, and I, and I'll do it because I've seen the benefits and there's some guru. I can't remember what his name was, but he, his famous story was, he always says, people ask me how to find enlightenment. And I keep telling them five minute cold shower every morning and they won't do it. <laughs> uh, that's actually so true, Bryce. That is so true. Yeah, that is so true. So we yeah. can do a cold, cold therapy, ice baths. I would have to, yes. Let's chat about that next week. We do the cold therapy. That'll yeah. be amazing. Yeah. It's but a, we it's, still have to do Tartaria. Yes, we are. Okay. Yes. I tell, you, I tell you what, we were, gonna, we were planning to start Tartaria next week, but what, I think it'll be a great one to do this cold therapy. I would actually love to hear about that because I – hate the cold what i do is i have a hot shower and then quickly at the end i'll take a minute cold shower <laughs> i gotta get all nice and hot first and then <laughs> you know like i'll all wash and do whatever with the hot water and then when i'm done I'll... <laughs> yeah well then next week let's do cold therapy and then we'll get into tartaria because i know a lot of people yeah. ask me on my channel because i keep talking about these cold showers i do and i'm like they suck but you're not gonna yeah. die I love it. it'll Let's change you it. it'll change you it'll make you feel really good when you're out and the cryotherapy and the ice baths all that kind of stuff really helps um with healing so um so yeah and it, and also it's it's a um it's a different kind of practice with your breathing too because when you're in that cold environment to really focus on just breathing through it and allowing the sensation to come and to let the body accept the cold it's amazing guys because your body knows how to do it. Your body knows how to accept that cold, that cold air, especially, especially if you're a white person whose genetics are <laughs> from Northern Europe. <laughs> um, you're genetically <laughs> created to handle this cold stuff. So yeah, we'll do that next week because I know a lot of people requested that. So, and then yeah, well, let's do it. Then. Pricey, as always, it is just the best fun having you, uh, chatting with you. It doesn't even feel like we're recording most of the time. It's just no. like uh, every now and then I'm going to remind myself, oh, okay, uh, <laughs> we live. <laughs> Don't say anything stupid. Don't say anything stupid. <laughs> and I know we had kind of talked about doing a mom's episode. We missed Mother's Day, but I know some of our um, – subscribers wanted us to bring our moms in and so i think we're still going to plan that yeah for you guys have our moms come on we'll have a south african mom and a Namibian mom and a southern mom so <laughs> it'll be an interesting show <laughs> yeah, i'm sure we're gonna have them all together but yeah we're, we, that's in the planning there's lots of things in the planning guys yes. and what else is happening is uh we are now here um on the solutions with aquarius rising africa we are starting a Sunday section, Sunday slot called Soulful Sunday. So that's going to be at, I think, 5 p.m. my time and 11 o'clock your time, Bryce. Yes, 11 a.m. Right? Sunday. And Jamie Soleil is going to be joining us, um, the Olympiad, yes. my friend, the Olympiad. She's the badass. She's going to be yes. joining us on Sunday as well. So that's super exciting. So I'm very excited to to um, to be chatting with her as well. 
hearing her story, talking about just wonderful soulful healing experiences that we've all experienced through our traumatic experiences in life because I think it's so important to know that no matter where in life you are, whether you've had horrendous things such as the worst kind of um, if you've been if you've been abused, if you've just had a crappy time doing something, each person has their experience, you know, but whatever it is, whatever it is, wherever you're at in the world, you know, and we're all where we are meant to be and healing is available to everyone. And it's not available, it's our birthright, you know, to heal really means just to bring ourselves back into balance again. We are not broken. We are not fractured and, and fragmented. We are not destroyed. We are not half. We are complete and we just need to tap into that. So I'm really looking forward to today for Sunday. So with Bryce back again. I'm super excited. Three times in one week. I Yay. know. Lucky me. <laughs> Lucky me. So. <laughs> okay. Wonderful, beautiful, Bryce. Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to say in, 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 um, in closing? I just, you guys are all badasses. And Shanti is right. You're not broken. You never were. You never were any type of yeah. obstacle you have. It's just a puzzle. That's all it is. It's just a, an opportunity to discover how you're not broken. So yeah. Um, the Makes Sophia sense. code that she, they talk about your, you, not only do you have that DNA imprint, that's your own, but you have a spiritual DNA. That's also your own as well. And that's a fragment of God. And so you are, you have the power. It's like at the end of the wizard of Oz, where she was like, you had the power all along. You've always had the power all along within you to, course correct and all you have to do is realize it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you if you don't think you're strong enough shanti and i are here to remind you yeah you are yeah you are <laughs> and it's not oh, this kind of strength that you feel that you see those of us who are tired and worn out and fatigued and just feel like life is on its last legs for us right now and just about the only reason you're feeling that way is because you've been dragging a lot of sadness, unhappiness, whatever it might be, all coming from the fear-based camp along with you. It's not the doing things that makes you tired. It's the how you're doing things that makes you tired. So when you decide just to stop where you are and just decide to do it differently, that immediately, you, it's like you drop that luggage and that immediately activates joy inside of you, which is like jet fuel for the yeah. body. And immediately you start feeling more energized. You start feeling more inspired. Your fatigue dissolves. Your depression dissolves. It's real. I've done this for a long time. I've, I work with myself on a minutely basis, basically, I've worked with many people over the years. I've seen how when we just decide to nurture ourselves first and foremost, especially if you're busy, especially if you're busy, you would definitely need to do that. Otherwise, you're going to make yourself sick. And, I do, I do and on that note. Yeah, they worry because we worry about the future because we've been conditioned to worry about the future because we're in a survival survival mechanism but you guys the future is is tomorrow never comes you know it's it's um uh, my grandmother when i was really i had anxiety as a kid and my mom's mom there's scarlett o'hara from gone with the wind she used to say just be like scarlett o'hara and be like fiddly d i'll worry about that tomorrow because tomorrow never comes you know and we know that one of my favorite quotes is don't you realize that some of the best days of your life haven't even happened yet yeah indeed because you're magic Indeed. and that, that as, as Mr. T says, the best is yet to come. And so if we stop dropping that worry of the future and just living for the excitement exactly. of being human and to help that, yeah. And how badass you In are like, yeah. yes, yes. 100%. So. In this moment, you are fine. In this moment, you are safe. In this moment, no matter what's happening around you. Because from this moment of feeling that way, you're going to create your future moments. Yes. So. Absolutely. God bless you all.
take good care of yourselves. Mwah. See you soon. I'll see you a little bit later again. We've got Jesse on, Jesse coming on just now. Oh, so I'll see you later, guys. Well, Jesse, I said, hey, <laughs> bye, guys. Love you, Max. Bye.